Hey tasters, I am so excited. Today I'm at Vlasivis Winery, right at the heart of the Krasochoria region of Limassol, the wine villages of Limassol in Kilani. I'm here to speak to Mr. Sophocles Vlasivis, the winemaker in chief, the founder, the creator of some of the best wines on the island. I can't wait to speak to him. I believe you studied uh, chemistry to begin with. Chemical engineering. You studied yes. chemical As, engineering. Yes. Chemical engineering at Imperial College. Finished my first degree and then uh, did my uh, master's degree at uh, winemaking in Oology at uh, UC Davis, California. There is a history in winemaking on all the families in the area. We are at Kilani, one of the villages of the area of uh, wine villages, as they are called, yes. And uh, I would say that um, all the people in the area, they were making their income in the old days from grapes and wine. My grandfather was not a, a winemaker as such, but uh, he had uh, vineyards. He was producing wine at home. The second generation, which is my father, which is not actually coming from Kilani, but he's from Rizzo Carpaso. He married my mother, who is from Kilani. I see. So he continued uh, by chance the tradition of uh, So he wine. married into winemaking tradition? Yes. I yes. see. And then he decided to make some wine? Uh, he was a chemical engineer. He was working uh, at uh, one of the big wineries in Limassol. So he took the vineyards of my grandfather and he uprooted them and started experimenting oh, uh, back in the 1970s on the new varieties at that time, on the international varieties that they brought in, the government brought in, so he started experimenting on where to plant what. Completely experimental plots, he planted Cabernet Sauvignon, Merlot, Grenache, uh, Shiraz, uh, and so on, on various vineyards at uh, different altitudes. I see. So after 20, 30 years when I came back, I found all this information and it was a start for me because I knew which variety is doing a different soil and uh, various altitudes. Okay, so your father essentially did, prepared... Did the job, yes. <laughs> yes. He did the groundwork, yes. the vineyard groundwork. interesting for me to, to work as a chemical engineer. The winemaking was an option, as my father was uh, working in a winery, and it was in the family as well. This is what I did basically. I stayed one year, I worked uh, at ETCO, and uh, I did my application at UC Davis, where I basically also uh, got a Fulbright uh, scholarship. scholarship. I went there and uh, did uh, two years my master's basically and uh, spent very good time there and uh, got a lot of experience as well as uh, academic uh, knowledge and uh, directly came back because I was anxious to start the business and <laughs> see how we will go. We started with four hectares which was some in the area and some in uh, other areas where we, we have uh, vineyards. And uh, we knew from, from the very beginning that the goal was to expand the vineyards and uh, put a lot of effort in making the best possible vineyards. Uh, and this is what we did for a lot of years. Moving from the old winery, which was more like a garage winery, you haven't visited that. No. I haven't visited yes. that, no. So, so it like was a garage my, band? Yes, it was my <laughs> granddad's supermarket, basically, in the middle yeah. of the village, 
where I squeezed in some tanks and started to see how the business will go because 20 years ago there was not really culture of wine in Cyprus. So it was a, a risky business to start with. We're gonna taste Griffos Dio, which is a blend of Xenisteri and Sauvignon Blanc. The vintage of this wine is 2018. Beautiful color. So this is 2018. Mm -hmm. We have a 70% Xenisteri and 30% Sauvignon Blanc in this wine. Basically the idea is to give freshness coming from Sauvignon Blanc, acidity that is coming from Sauvignon Blanc. That's beautiful. And good fruit. We want to keep the character of Xenisteri in the wine. Okay? So yes. we don't want to overdo it. So instead of adding artificial acidity... Yeah, we don't like to, uh, yeah, to so cook. <laughs> yes. so, you just, uh, so you just add you Sauvignon blending. Blanc? Yes, the, the, the idea is, is to I blend to get to the, to the point to where the you To the balance want. that you yes. want. And uh, I, I agree with that. So, as you say, a very fruity wine. Intense, intense year. The 2018 was intense in fruity aromas, both in the Griffos white as well as in the Sauvignon Blanc that we are producing. I'm uh, getting, um, I'm getting both uh, citrus, but also some tropical fruit. That's that a little bit of from yes, Sauvignon Blanc. From the Sauvignon well, yes. Blanc. Absolutely beautiful. And this is a 2018 vintage, yeah. so it's, uh, it's bright and young and absolutely gorgeous. So let's continue with the uh, Yanudi. Yep. Basically, so, this label doesn't say much. That is ruby red. That, that is shimmering. Kind of the character of, uh, of uh, Shiraz. It has a blue hue sometimes you can find yes. it okay this is a bit aged but when you see the young wine it has this like violet red yes color. you can see like a, yeah. a magenta around uh -huh. the, the rim and and we say that it's a very spicy mm. uh, variety um, we think that um, the main characteristics of the of the aromas are the um, cloves yes and uh, white pepper. I mean, even though, even though it's a dry wine, the the fruit r reminds me of sweet wine. Oh, sweet wines, <laughs> yes. Because it's uh, it has that delicate, velvety feel. Usually, you expect sweetness with that. This richness is usually uh, is usually accompanied by a lot of residual sugar. But to actually get that satiny texture without any sugar at all is is quite incredible. And uh, this, this, as you said, cloves and allspice berries and, and such a beautiful colour. So Let's see this, guys. This is, this is my first Cypriot wine. This was the beginning of a love story. Let's taste it. Shiraz 2017. So Shiraz in general is coming out in the market quite early. So 17 was in oak barrels for 12, 12 months, um, but up to now it didn't really have any real bottle aging. So do you think um, that the, the, the terroir and the climate here makes this Shiraz different to Shiraz grown in continental Europe, for instance? Um, yes. It, yes. Yes? How um, is it? Different. I'm a Shiraz lover in general, so Me too. <laughs> I have tasted Shiraz from all, all around the world. For example, Australian Shiraz, the very jammy wines. You can see it in the taste. The wines coming from our climate, they are high in alcohol, but they have a very good acidity that they make them more elegant. Rhone Valley Shiraz, they don't have the, of course, the alcohol because of the weather, more balance in alcohol. Uh, and for some strange reason, the acidity there is not as high as ours. So oh, it's, okay. it's yes, even though it's cooler. Even though it's cooler. So again, a very very rich color, slightly darker than the Yanuvi, yeah. maybe, mm, but very different aromas. Mm -hmm. So when I um, I posted um, a photograph on Instagram uh, talking about your Shiraz because it's one of my favorite wines, and I got a question. 
did the winemaker choose the name Shiraz instead of Syrah on purpose? Okay. No. No, it was basically when they brought it for a variety back in the 1960s, they had it as the main name being Shiraz for no reason and the second name being Syrah as the French pronunciation, possibly because it our um, way of talking in, in Cypriot, it makes this shh. That makes sense, yes. yes. That's why we've so, chosen Shiraz instead so of Syrah. What I believe what Sophocles is saying is that the French name was too delicate for the Cypriot palate. <laughs> So the last wine that we are tasting is uh, Opus Artis from 2013. It's a blend of uh, Merlot, Cabernet Sauvignon and Shiraz. The idea behind this wine is that we, we produce the different wines that is coming from single vineyards of Merlot, Cabernet Sauvignon and Shiraz. We produce them separately. We taste them in November, so we, we do the harvesting in August and September and then we taste the barrels to decide what we are going to do about the blending. Okay, so let's, let's, let's taste, taste it. it. Our premium red. Ah. So this is a wine that was in barrels for 18 months. 18 months, new barrels? New barrels. New barrels. And uh, three years in the bottle, it has a, a way to go. You will taste it and you will see that the tannins are still there, the fruit is intense and it, it has an excellent... So when do you expect this to, to peak, in your opinion? Um, How many more years? Okay, we have no idea. <laughs> the truth is that the first vintage that we have uh, produced of such a blend was uh, the 2008. Okay. So we have experience of only 10 years. The 2008 is already at a very good point that we could say that is the, the top of the wine. Much darker, the colour, of course. Brown uh, hues already there. It's uh, five years old, but as you say, yes, but it's, it's still very dark. Mm. The fruit is very bright still. Yes, the tannins are there. You would enjoy this paired with uh, red meat, for sure, because uh, the tannins, if you pair these with uh, uh, with beef or, or lamb, they would just sing. Yes. It's beautiful. Um, it's a wine that definitely you need to open and let it breathe before, before drinking. It's not a, a bottle to open and enjoy directly. Um, we suggest more than two hours of opening and letting decanting it breathe. Decanting it yes, for two decanting, hours. Decanting, decanting it is even better. It's, a, it's an unfiltered wine, so it may have sediment. So decanting, it, decanting is essential to get rid of the sediment, mm -hmm. uh, but um, to let it breathe and get to a point where the aromas get complex and the tannins are getting smooth, you can even do it in the bottle if you feel like. Um, once when I wanted to really enjoy this wine, I opened 24 hours before drinking. 24 hours? Yes. In and the bottle? Yes. And, and just left it there left and it was it fine? There, wow. It was fine. Um, it shows you how much aging potential. Of course, then you, you commit to having the whole bottle, but it's not a problem. Yeah. <laughs> this is very we, tasty. We can do it. <laughs> we can do it. <laughs> Tasters, I have had the best time ever here at Vlasidis Wineries. I have spoken to the man himself, the creator of the wines. I have seen one of the most modern and purpose-built wineries on the island. I've walked through the barrel room, I've looked at the tanks and I have tasted some divine wines. This has been a good day and I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have enjoyed the video, leave me a thumbs up. Please subscribe by clicking on the red button below. Have you ever tasted Placidis wines? Let me know in the comment section below. Cheers, everybody.